I'm in the new BMW M3 CS. Next to me is an Audi RS4 Avant, and we're gonna have a drag race. So this car has a three liter straight six twin turbo engine with 460 horsepower. That has a 2.9 liter twin turbo V6 with 450 horsepower. This car has a seven speed dual clutch automatic gearbox with a proper launch control system. That one has an eight-speed automatic with a normal torque converter with a kind of sort of launch control. Of course, this M3 is rear-wheel drive. That Audi has quattro all-wheel drive. Please make sure you subscribe to this channel and click on the bell icon to turn your notifications on. Also, why not check us out at Car Wow Cars on Instagram for some behind-the-scenes content. Yeah? You done that? Right, let's do this. <laughs> So close, I was closing on that RS4. Bit more time, I'd have taken it. There's a slight delay when you release the brake on launch control, so the arms go down, you release the brake, and it takes like a split second, and then the system engages and the car takes off, and obviously it spins its wheels a bit because you have to have traction control off. That though, you just hold on the brake, and when you release the brake, it goes immediately. There is no delay, and that helped him, as did the Quattro all-wheel drive. Tell you what, we're going to do another run and I'm not going to have the launch control on. I'm just going to hold it on the brake and see if that makes a difference because it was so, so, so close. Three, two, one. That was rubbish and worse and <laughs> just pointless. Okay. <laughs> that didn't help. End of that. So yeah, you have to use launch control. It does improve the time. It's just uh, the delay, the delay of it. Let's do it one more time with launch control, but try and counteract the delay by timing my release of the brake to see if it makes a difference. So the car won't go until the hands go down, but I need to probably release the brake a bit earlier. Let's see what happens. Three, two, one. Good start there. Timed it perfectly. Come on, BMW. I reckon we might just be able to have him if there's enough track. Come on. Come on. Come on. He's pulling it back. Come on. I reckon that might have to be a photo finish. That salt was about as good as I'm gonna get it. That average just every time just takes off dead easy. There's no timing, no timing. Whoo, 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 whoo. I got rather excited at that. <laughs> the only way I can beat him, I reckon, clearly is to jump the start. Yep, I have to face the facts. Even with my very best start in the M3, the RS4 got off the line more quickly and was always ahead. It did the standing quarter mile in 12.1 seconds. Once it got going, the BMW was always catching the Audi, but it never managed to get past it. In the end, it did the standing quarter mile in 12.2 seconds. But will the BMW fare better in the next challenge? Now we can have a rolling race from 50 miles an hour. So the cars are in normal drive, like you're just cruising along. I'm gonna count it in and see what happens. So here we go. Three, two, one, go! I think I kicked down quicker, way quicker. And now, yeah, goodbye, Audi. Absolutely destroyed. This gearbox kicked down faster than this, I could tell. Definitely did. And this car seems just stronger, the engine. It just pulls really hard. Then there's the fact that even though we've both got 600 newton meters of torque, 
This car is just under 1,600 kilos. That's just under 1,800. And so it was telling. If you encounter someone on the motorway and you don't want them to overtake you, you're going to be better off in this because it just pulls that a bit harder and the gearbox is a bit more snappy. What's also just as important in a performance car is being able to stop quickly. And that brings me on to the final test. What we're going to do now is a brake test from 70 miles an hour, hit the cones, full emergency stop. So, oh, I thought that was going to slow quicker, but this just nipped it at the end. I'm pretty sure it did. Let me get out and check. So, it is very close. But I should say that this BMW beat that Audi by about a metre. I should point out this car does have carbon ceramic brakes, but they're standard on it. So that's all good then. Actually, carbon brakes don't really provide any advantage when you're doing one-off brake tests such as this. They just cope better than normal steel brakes when you're doing lots of heavy braking over and over again, like when you're driving on a circuit. And that's exactly what the CS is designed to do. Out on the track, this is a beautiful, beautiful machine. It just feels agile, feels sharp, it's very pointy, you know, there's no understeer, it just tucks its nose into a corner and without too much provocation you can get the back end moving and coming around on you and you can control it on the power. It feels very beautifully balanced and you can exploit that out on a track. On the road, not so much. What is this car going to be like living with every single day on the motorway? in the winter. You know, it's, it's quite noisy in here. Most of the time, you're putting up with its compromises for those brief moments of glory and thrill. You want to put this thing on the track, really, to fully appreciate it. Chuck into some corners and <laughs> you, you forgive it all of its weaknesses because it is a total hooligan of a thing to drive. And then you just love it, you fall in love with it. It's so purposeful, this thing. There is no doubt that all times it's designed to put a smile on your face. You know, <laughs> what absolute, absolute laugh this thing is. When you're not paying for your own tires, like I'm not today. If I was, I wouldn't be doing that so often. Once or twice, maybe then it would be all about being neat and tidy, which you can be in this car, you can be neat and tidy in it. If you want the finest handling, most brutal accelerating, lariest out of the two cars, make no mistake, it's this, it's this guy, it's this, it's definitely this, 100%. If you don't want that all the time, look elsewhere. And the Audi RS4 is a great place to start your search if you want something fast, but not quite so frenetic as the focused M3 CS. The thing about the Audi RS4 is that when you're just driving it, you can forget that it's supposed to be the performance model because it's just like a normal A4. This car's got the adaptive suspension and when you have the car in comfort mode, it's really, really good over bumps despite the large wheels. So it's really great for just cruising up and down the motorway. Like I say, you forget. And then you put your foot down and it just takes off. <laughs> It never feels as brutal or as on edge as the BMW. It's just civilised, it's easy. On the track, yeah, it's just not. It's not as good as a BMW. Even if I put it into dynamic mode, it's gonna make the exhaust a bit louder, sharper throttle response, weight is steering, and it stiffens up the suspension. It's still not as edgy or sharp or as alive feeling as the BMW, but it's still pretty capable. And really, if you're doing track days, this is not where it's at. It can cope and you go very quickly. It's on the road where this excels, when you don't necessarily know what's coming next, when you need that added grip, that confidence. You are gonna be faster than this on the road than you are in the BMW, because it's just easier to drive quickly. It's more confidence inspiring. Even if you turn the stability control off, give it a bit of a... You can get it sideways, which is a bit silly. You can feel it moving around beneath you. You know what the car's doing. The chassis is actually really, really good at letting you know what's about to happen. It can be a bit of a laugh, but it's nowhere near the same as making a BMW M3 with its rear drive setup dance.
So, in the end, if you want fun and thrills, the M3 is king. But if you're after an easy to live with daily driver that's supercar quick, the Audi RS4 will suit more people more of the time. <laughs>